Um, we really, really appreciate your support. It's, it's so much, much needed. And um, later on you'll hear a little bit more about that. Um, but first of all, I'd like to do a couple of thank yous. Um, I'd like to thank June Hal jones and her wonderfully brilliant committee. I've met a few of you already. Fantastic job. Um, and I'd also like to thank Neil Hobday for hosting us um, at this wonderful Members Club. Um, some of you weren't able to hear me when he was speaking at the very beginning of the event, but Neil, thank you very much. Um, so before we move on to um, why we're all here, um, I wanted to just give you a little bit of a quick squeeze on some of the fundraising activities that you can take part in. So um, I've seen lots of stickers, so I suspect many of you have already bought raffle tickets. The raffle will be drawn at half time over here. Um, I'm hoping that you have now all seen the wonderful silent auction lots. Um, the si please do still come up and place your bids. The silent auction will close after the live auction. The live auction, hopefully if you've seen in your programme all of the lots, um, will be led through that by Robert Hall. Thank you, Robert, for um, taking, um, um, doing this for us. Um, and then there are a couple of other things. So on your tables, I wonder if you could all just have a quick conversation and identify which one of you's birthday is closest to the 7th of November. You may not know, but Mary Curie's birthday was the 7th of November. We've got some lovely, lovely goodie bags. So once you've identified who on your table is closest to that date, let yourselves know to our volunteers who've got a little gift for you. 30th of November. Well, you're the closest. It's yours, you're your closest. and our volunteer-led services. What you may not know is that we currently care for, provide support to about 40,000 people in, across the country. That's actually only 10% of the people that need us. So there's so much more that we need to do. And the other thing that's um, something to bear in mind, at the moment, there's 400,000 people um, that need our support. But over the next 10 to 15 years, that number is going to increase to half a million. So again, there's so much, much more that we need to do as Marie Curie. And I'm going to hand over now to Catherine Leroy, who is one of our nurses, who's going to tell you a little bit more about our work and why your support today has been so much appreciated. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. 
I'm very proud to be here representing the nurses across Greater London and our 2,000 colleagues who work in cities, towns and villages throughout the UK. So from all the nurses, a massive thank you for attending this lovely event, which is going to raise vital funds for us to help continue our nursing service. So Marie Curie nurses like me look after people with advanced cancer or those with any other end-stage terminal illness such as motor neuron disease, Parkinson's, heart failure or dementia. And to work so closely alongside someone in their final days and hours is always a great privilege. Um, patients always tell us that that stage is the most precious, difficult and important stage of their life. Um, so it's, it's a huge honour to be with them at, the, at that time. And it's humbling, to actually, to know that our care enables them to die in the place of their choice and on their own terms. And sometimes what we do takes all our nursing expertise to support them, but very often it's simple things that really count. Just recently, I was with an elderly gentleman the day before he died and he asked me if I could make him sit up so that he could hold a pen because he wanted to write on his betting slip for the horse races. <laughs> and he was so weak that he could barely hold the pen and he kept losing concentration so it literally took him about two hours to, to get down what he wanted to put on the form. But he was very determined and so it was crucial that he was comfortable enough and wasn't rushed so that he could get that task completed. And it was also very touching to see the look on his face when he knew that he'd done that for the very last time. One of my colleagues was actually with him when he died. It was Saturday afternoon. He was in his own bed at home with all his family around him and Channel 4 Racing was on the TV. So it was actually the ending that he would have wanted. I know that, and his family knew that, and that's what we aim for. We also have nine wonderful Marie Curie hospices across the UK. They provide that we have one in London, in the, our London Hampstead Hospice, and in other areas in the UK. They all provide specialist inpatient care and a fantastic range of day therapy services. And whether you're a patient, a, a relative or a visitor, from the minute you go through the doors, you get the most amazing care and compassion that's second to none. So those are very important places. But actually, still most people would prefer to be cared for at home at the end of their life, um, where they feel safe and where they can have their own things around them. And we see families make tremendous efforts to cope on their own, but um, it can be the most stressful, exhausting and worrying time imaginable. They're, they're just physically and emotionally exhausted beyond belief. So our care, our physical, practical, uh, and practical nursing and our emotional support helps families to cope and stops them having to give up or stops um, and helps prevent admission to hospital because of a crisis. We get lots of letters from families thanking us and the crux of each letter is we don't know how we'd have got this throughout without you. So we know that our care makes a tremendous difference. One of our recent patients was a gentleman called Stephen, who, um, he was an insurance broker. He, he, looked, he took good care of himself, he ate well, he um, didn't smoke, he did regular cycling and jogging. But you can do everything right and still find yourself terminally ill at 44. So he um, developed, he suddenly lost weight and got a pain in his hip and then was devastated to be told that he had advanced bone cancer. We met him 15 months later when he was dying and he was referred to Marie Curie because after lengthy treatment in hospital, for the last part he simply wanted to be at home with his wife and two boys. 
So we provided care overnight and during the day, and our care overnight meant that his exhausted wife could get some sleep, knowing that he wouldn't be um, in pain or anxious in the early hours, which you can imagine is when fears and worries can tend to build up. Um, Stephen really inspired me with his, with his strength and his courage. Um, and he, he often used to say, I know I'm dying, but I've got so much to do. And it wasn't hard to see the, the sort of panic that he often felt. But whenever he was really stressed like that, he used to say to me, could I, could I put on the CD of Louis Armstrong singing We Have All the Time in the World? And that just calmed him down better than any medication. And because he was at home, uh, Stephen could take advantage of his uh, better days or stronger moments in a way that he simply couldn't have done if he'd been in hospital. So sometimes we helped him into the garden and he was able to watch his boys kick a, a, a football around the garden, which he loved. Um, sometimes it was simple things like popping him up in bed so that he could get the paperwork done that he wanted to do or when he was very weak, holding the phone to his ear so that he could speak to his brother in Australia at 3am. There was a lot we could do to help. We answered the family's questions and just gently guided them through everything so that um, they did cope until the end. And Stephen died at home, at peace, with his family and leaving them with the best possible memories even of his very last days. So I hope you can see why our nursing service is special. Um, after he died, Stephen's boys went straight into the garden and kicked their football around. And I remember feeling very proud that Marie Curie had enabled him to, to die at home so that they could do exactly that because it felt just the right thing for them to do and exactly what Stephen would have wanted. So all the care that we provide is totally free of charge to patients and families, as it should be. But the charity has to raise £20 for every single hour of nursing. Um, that's already a mammoth task, and we want to reach even more people, which is why we need you and why we're so very grateful to you for your support today. So I know many of you support us already, um, but if any of you can think of any way, financially or otherwise, that you can support us in the future, you know, we'd love to hear from you. And today we hope you'll bid as generously as you can in the auction to follow, and all the money raised will help someone who's terminally ill. I can't think of anyone who tries harder than we do to make sure that someone um, is cared for in the place of their choice and has a peaceful, dignified death and does leave their family with the best possible memories. It's very rewarding for us to know that we've been able to provide them with the best care possible, and we hope you'll find it equally rewarding to help us. So thank you, and have a lovely afternoon.